African. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, so the purpose of this session is to make uh, uh, an introduction about the project that we started uh, last year related to the EU United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that we will call SDG uh, in short. Uh, so we will uh, explain to you what we did, what we achieved this year, how it impacts you, uh, and also with a focus on SDG uh, 5 on gender equality. Uh, so with my colleague uh, Deborah Vautier in charge of policy and partnerships, and I forgot to introduce myself. So my name is Claire Dallier, and I'm a project manager also in the standardization department. So this is for the introduction. So let's go to next slide. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, in brief, what I just explained. So the content of this session. So what we did and uh, what's next, and uh, for also uh, the coming year. Uh, so briefly, uh, we will recall you the agenda 2030 and the 17 SDG. You may know already this, or may be involved also in your organization. Uh, in that type of project. And uh, we will start by a two minute short video released by the United Nations, uh, briefly explaining the 17 SDG. We have to launch it. Yeah, ah, okay. Mm. Let's try technology on a Monday morning. Can someone online confirm that it's working? The United Nations is an organization with goals of peace and sustainable development around the world. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> we want the full experience. This is spoiled. Their mission is huge. So again, our goal is to wake you guys up. So this is going to help. The United Nations is an organization with goals of peace and sustainable development around the world. Their mission is huge, but we're breaking it down in two minutes. 17 sustainable development goals. Let's get to them, cause the more you know. Look, in some corners of the world today, people are living on a dollar a day. Hey, that's not how it ought to be. So go one, eliminate poverty, and go two, root out hunger across the globe. There's 800 million people hungry if you wanna know. Number three is health and well being. And getting people the health care that they need in Learning in school are the heart of goal four Education opens up minds and doors Goal number five is empower girls and women So they can have the same rights that men are given Number six, people need water that's clean Poor sanitation can't spread disease Carbon free energy is goal number seven And how to achieve it is the question that's pressing But if we put our minds together and work hard We can find a solution, I'm guessing 17 sustainable development goals to improve life all around the globe protecting human health and the environment whatever bad we make we gon' have to lie in it 17 sustainable development goals to improve life all around the globe protecting human health and the environment whatever bad we make we gon' have Imagine that you work all day for no pay Economic growth and decent workers go eight Goal number nine is to foster innovation and infrastructure and industrialization Goal number ten, inequality reduction Eleven is sustainable city construction Twelve, well that's sustainable consumption So what we use matches up with production Goal thirteen calls for urgent action To combat climate change cause we know what's happening Fourteen, protect life under seas Fifteen, protect life on land goal 16 is for peace and justice all over the planet they're in high demand and the final goal number 17 is the critical factor the heart of the machine it's the strength in the way we achieve these goals of sustainable development around the globe yo 17 sustainable development goals to improve life all around the globe Protecting human health and the environment Whatever bad we make, we gon' have to lie in it 17 sustainable development goals To improve life all around the globe Protecting human health and the environment Whatever bad we make, we gon' have to lie in it <laughs> Yes, wake up, Carla <laughs> 
So we hope you like it. So we uh, we uh, uh, found this video both uh, looking forward, quite inspirational, and uh, really a snapshot of what are the 17 SDG. Uh, so briefly, uh, where does it come from? So where is the agenda 2030? So replacing the millennium goals, but we're more focused on four countries. So the agenda is really for all countries and signed by world leaders in 2015. It's articulated in five dimensions, so known as the five P, so people, planet, prosperity, peace, and alliances. So it's not only about environment. So when we talk about sustainability, we thought about environment, but it's uh, economic, social, and uh, environment. So really uh, targeting all sectors. And uh, uh, it's um, this agenda, so sets 17 uh, SDG with clear objective and measurable targets uh, to determine so all the project uh, progress for each goals. So these SDG can be seen as a toolkit for a nation to help them achieve these goals and uh, make the change happening. So but how it uh, relates uh, with standardization. So first, I will just uh, show you the 17 goals that we have seen. So as you could see, the five uh, first goals relate more to uh, social, to people. Uh, the goal in the middle between 6 and 11 are the one uh, related to economy and prosperity. And uh, the 12, uh, the last line, 13, 14, and 15 are more about environment. The 16 is about peace, justice, and institution. And the set 17 is about partnerships. Uh, it's where also as a standardization organization, we have a role to play as a catalyst for partnerships and alliances. And uh, how it relates to standards. So actually standards offer uh, clear rules, consensus-based, um, uh, behavior and uh, agreement uh, to contribute and support the SDG. Uh, we think mainly in the energy sector, for instance, with uh, energy measurement, uh, management, performance, and so on. But also recently with the COVID-19 crisis, we have seen that sentinel uh, responded in an emergency with such deliverables like uh, um, by delivering so, uh, sorry, uh, a new uh, specification regarding community face covering. So that helped manufacturer to ensure that everybody uh, get uh, safe instruction uh, to to protect uh, people in this kind of crisis and also by uh, giving uh, for a certain amount of time uh, some standards for free also in the medical sectors and so on that were essential to uh, to cope with this crisis so we have a role to play and uh, this is why this actually started this project uh, um, because it's high in the European political agenda. There are a lot of new initiatives like the Green Deal, uh, and today is a twin uh, green and digital transition. Uh, it's also part of our SEN and Senelec strategy 2030, uh, and we signed also earlier uh, in 2019 uh, the Trust Standard uh, Declaration, where we mentioned also the SDG. Uh, and uh, we have seen also that our international counterpart at ISO and IEC started a similar project in 2018. Uh, where they uh, also started to look how they contribute, they can contribute, and to support uh, the implementation of the SDG. So we realized that we were doing a lot because we have a lot of sectors at Sen and Senelec, but with little or no visibility. So that's why we started this project, to raise awareness towards Sen and Senelec contribution, contribution to the SDG, and uh, to incite uh, also our stakeholders to use or consider or recommend and Senelec work uh, for the implementation of SDG. I also think about the sustainability reporting that most of the company will have to do in the coming years, especially SMEs, SMEs for instance. So I put a slide where it's uh, actually written in a strategy for you at a later stage. And uh, so concretely, uh, so no blah blah. What do we do as an select? So few actions. So in 2021, we joined forces with ISO and IEC and we signed a standard 
uh, the London Declaration, so, sorry, for the climate action changes. Uh, and as of next year, we will start also more action to make sure that is implemented. Um, and uh, in 2019, I will leave the floor to my colleague, Deborah. Thank you. I think we have to change everything. Okay. Hello. Um, so thank you, Claire. As you said, I'm uh, working in the policy and partnerships department. One of my responsibility is to uh, cover also all of our diversity and inclusiveness projects. So that's why I'm going to be adding a little bit more details about our um, action surrounding SDG 5, which is about gender equality for um, women and girls. Um, we've tried to make this session as, as awakening as possible. So lots of images um to um highlight maybe why gender implications is of importance uh for you as standardizers um you might be familiar with some or all of those uh products and uh what they have in common besides all being standardized of course is um that there are uh, common examples of products that are not equally protecting all users and specifically not equally protecting women as much as men so you've mentioned already ppe so protective personal equipment during the pandemic it was very much highlighted that such gloves for example were not fitting the workforce, the medical workforce equally, meaning that, um, for example, some, some um, female workers were not protected as well when um, uh, taking care of patients, for example. So, of course, it's an issue of safety. It's also an issue of efficiency, because when you have extra gloves in your way that you constantly have to readjust, that you can't grip properly the tools to 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 take care of people. Of course, your your work is less productive, less efficient, and possibly less safe. And um, all of those examples on the screen um, have similar non-gender responsive stories. I think the firefighter jacket is an, a common example that has been based on male morphology and therefore women specificities such as breasts, for example, were not taken into account. Therefore, female firefighters are not equally protected when they're trying to save your home from, from a fire. The, the um, car crash test dummies are also a very famous example that um, has linked to it a very, very um, scary um, statistics, which is that women are 74% more likely to be severely injured or die from a similar car crash than a man. In, in the same um, situation. Then you have the bike saddle, you have the AI uh, biases um, that are for gender, but also beyond, of course, um, ethnicity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, I think it's very important for us as part of the standardization community to be aware of those um, gender unresponsiveness uh, because all of those products are um, supported by standards that you guys um, put together. Um, and of course, we want to make sure that all the products are safe for all and equally for everyone. Um, so we know that as standard makers, we have a role to play towards gender equality. Um, I think I'm going to stop here because we have a lot of time to catch up, but thank you. Yeah, I can see the time. I don't know. Sorry. More. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. uh... Another video. Yay. <laughs> so. Claire, you already mentioned our strategy, the Sense and Elect Joint Strategy 2030. I, I really wanted to just highlight that all over it. And we also have a, a specific goal dedicated to making sure that our system is inclusive. You, you must have heard this 10,000 times, an inclusive, open and transparent system. Inclusivity is, is a very large concept. It's gender, but it's, it's beyond that as well. Um, you'll hear more from me, yay, this afternoon um, on a session dedicated of, of Annex 3 uh, standardization um, organizations. Um, but our activity specifically on, on gender, if you can pause, gender responsive standards, um, we're very much boosted by uh, the declaration that was launched in 2019 by- you will oh, see who really wants to come in <laughs> uh, no problem you can stay there um 
so UNDC started this declaration on gender responsive standards and standards um, development, which Sen and Senelec signed in 2019 together with more than, than 20, I think it's 23 by now, of our members as individual signatories as well. So you can see there's a, a whole commitment of our community towards this specific SDG as well. And because I've talked too much, now I'm going to show a video of UNDC. Are there any jobs going in the area? There is a secretary position, just three miles from you. That's not true. My brother applied for a job as a manager only yesterday. <gasps> I wonder if women are affected by chemicals more than men. It seems like one size really doesn't fit all. Hmm. Standards make our lives safer, simpler, more comfortable and more efficient. Standards bring us benefits at home, at work, during leisure time, both at home and abroad. We often only appreciate the importance of a standard when it is missing or has not been properly applied. Because things do not work as they should. So, it seems that standards are developed by panels of experts, known as technical committees, who share their knowledge and expertise. But it seems to me that acknowledging who is at the table is critical when it comes to developing standards. There's not a woman in sight here. Time to join them. Hmm, so what is the solution? Let's take a look. UNECE's Gender Responsive Standards Initiative began in 2016 in support of SDG 5 and is composed of representatives of standards bodies, international organizations, academia, and associated research institutions. Gender responsive standards are standards which acknowledge the distinct needs of different genders and take concerted action to ensure the effectiveness of the standard for all. Well, that's just a little sneak peek um, of this initiative. Uh, and I'll come back a little bit later in the presentation to um, highlight the specific actions that Sen and Senelec have put together to um, walk the talk after um, signing this declaration. Thank you. <laughs> Project on the United Nations SDG and uh, uh, to see how uh, they could uh, apply uh, a systematic approach but enable the standardization community uh, to demonstrate whether a standard um, or a new over deliverable uh, is supporting one or several SDG. So the project was articulated around several activities. Uh, first, the SDG prioritization, because we could not uh, map all our uh, all the SDGs, the 17 in, in one year. So we had to see what were the most, where we were doing actually making the most obvious contribution to the SDG, more relevant uh, SDG for our uh, work. Uh, we also wanted to raise more awareness and to develop communication material uh, to provide guidance to you, to the technical bodies. Um, and uh, uh, a mapping exercise also with um, a pilot project that we run with uh, some technical committees and also how to sustain the approach to capture the data automatically from our databases in the future. So this required uh, changes also and update of our IT systems and application. And at the end, the results, the, the outcome is visible on our website. So it was launched in May. I will uh, show you in a moment. So just a, a few words about the governance, because project sponsor was Sen and Smelec Technical Board. Uh, it was initiated by the BT. Uh, we work with cross-functional team at CCMC, so all the departments were involved. 
Uh, we also work um, with partners and uh, with uh, Sentinel HTC uh, leadership that we selected for a pilot project and with our stakeholders. So uh, Deborah mentioned UNICE, so the United Nations uh, Office for Europe, uh, which has the results also today uh, made uh, our mapping available on their website and also our ISO uh, counterpart uh, at an international, so ISO and IC. So we learn also from their experience because they started this project uh, before us. Uh, and uh, it helped us also to, to make this faster and more efficient. So what is the project outcome? So it's the most important. So we made the mapping exercise uh, with uh, selected technical committees uh, and we managed to map around 1,200 standards. We developed a mapping tool, a digital mapping tool and we revise a new work item form. This is where you are impacted and I will show it to you uh, in the next slide. And we also develop for you, the technical body officers, uh, secretary, chairman and expert, a toolbox where we uh, actually summarize the information you have to know uh, for the SDG and how it can support, uh, it can, yeah, it can support the standardization work. So really uh, for, for you. And we learned this also from ISO and IC that we needed to provide more guidance because HDG, everybody knows, but uh, it's not easy uh, necessarily to make links with the standardization work. Uh, we have also embedded uh, in our data the ISO and IC parallel uh, work. So it's uh, now shown in our digital mapping. Uh, it's released on our website portal. Um, we also made some communication on the World Standard Days because for two years in a row, uh, the theme is the SDG. So in partnership with ISO and IC, we also contributed to some uh, social media action towards this theme. Uh, and we have also um, made a webinar for our experts because we uh, also work with a group of um, um, experts appointed by members for this project. The mapping results um, concretely. So we have, um, so we started with 1,200 standards and we have almost 6,000 standards now uh, mapped. Uh, so it's around 20% of our uh, portfolio. Uh, I just put on screen uh, what has more, uh, where we can see actually the more predominant contribution from SEN and SENELEX. So the goal three, nine, and 12. So three is about good health and well being. Uh, this is where we contribute in sectors like uh, medical devices, uh, but also toys, PPE, uh, textiles, um, as for instance, uh, preventing chemical content in, in those products uh, and all in support of EU legislation. Uh, and in a second bubble, you can see, um, for instance, the SDG7, which is about uh, yeah. affordable and clean energy. Uh, and in, in this field, we have um, uh, 25 SEN and SENELEC technical committee uh, it's about eco-design and energy labeling. And we have our new colleague also who is in charge of, of this sector uh, at SEN and SENELEC. And where we produce standards really with dedicated methods, energy measurement, performance, and so on. So we, we, we do a lot in, in that area. So since May, we have uh, integrated uh, new pages in our uh, SEN SENELEC website. So you have a section about European uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, this is a landing page. Um, and we have a digital mapping. So this is um, this one. And when you click on each goal, you can see the number of standards that contribute to each goal uh, for SEN and SENELEC. And you can see the total. Uh, we have also individual pages on each SDG. Um, I have to say it's a uh, living exercise because the pages will be uh, completed uh, as much as we have new information or new activities uh, linked to each SDG and how we contribute to and the SDG 5 uh, pages have recently been updated also with new actions. Uh, you can also uh, search standards. Uh, we have a new uh, classification uh, by goals. And you have also for the standards that have been mapped uh, the SDG icon under each um, standard. Uh, so you can see these standards contribute to which, which goals. 
Uh, I, I wanted also to show you um, the UN SDGs, the cartography from the European uh, Commission priorities and how it's really part, intrinsic part uh, of the European policy today. So it's interesting to see how they have done also this uh, cartography and how it fits uh, what they, the goals that they want to achieve uh, and uh, how it's mainstreaming sustainability in all European policies today. So now about the tools, um, how uh, I mentioned that the new uh, work item form. So this is a form that you are using for new or revised uh, projects, so standardization deliverables. You have to fill in and this information is then entered in our uh, databases at CEN and CENELEC. And so the CEN and CENELEC Technical Board, upon the advice of this project uh, group, uh, added uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals so now it is required in this new work item form uh, to uh, indicate if this project is contributed uh, to one or several goals. So based on that, this data is captured and it's automatically uh, after visible on our CEN and CENELEC uh, website on the different pages I, I just show you. So, and this is required no, now for CEN and CENELEC TC secretary to use this uh, since uh, January last year, uh, this year. So, uh, so few IT system and application have been impacted. So um, all the working area that you are using uh, uh, at CEN and CENELEC, so what projects online um, where you are entering the new work item form. Uh, MIDAS, which is our database, there is a new classification. Uh, in Projects Online, there is also a new classification where you can see the SDG. Um, and of the website, of course, there are dynamic pages today uh, that show this uh, digital mapping. And there is also what we call API, but it's for IT members who are kind of communication between IT to IT uh, through the national standardization body where, where the data also can be uh, shared. And uh, one of my last slides, I think, uh, it's about the toolbox. So this is a PDF uh, when, with one or two pages per goal, where it's a one-stop source with all info on each SDG, and which is relevant for your work. So I really invite you to have a look to this uh, toolbox. It has been made uh, uh, by you, actually. It's uh, different members from the NSB and the national committees that have worked together uh, on providing this with our also communication team. Uh, so there were standardizers, uh, by standardizer for standardizers. So I hope uh, uh, you will have a look at it. And I leave the floor to my colleague. Thank you. Um, I promised you that I would deep dive a little bit more into the sentence and like actions that we've put together towards gender responsive standards. So in support of SDG5 after signing the declaration that I've mentioned. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because our first gender action plan is actually um, coming to an end in a couple of, of days at the end of this year. Um, so more information is available, but I think that what's really important to note is that after those first three years of, of um, getting together and collaborating with our members and with uh, important stakeholders in our system, um, we've really managed to build a collective understanding on the importance and the benefits of gender responsive standardization, the implication it has on our, um, on our job, on our work and our standards. Um, I can, I'm happily testifying all the time that this three years has had such a positive impact on the issue. I constantly get um, feedback from you actually um, about how um, you've heard someone mentioning gender responsive standards in your TCs or how a working group is um, addressing um, their, their um, experts in gender inclusive um, language, for example. Uh, but of course, um, this is only the beginning of change um, and uh, we need a continued commitment towards making sure that our deliverables and our environments are fully gender responsive. So that's why I'm really, really happy to announce that a second gender action plan has been approved by our CEN and CENELEC boards um, in their meeting in November 2022. So that's 
uh, fresh off the press. Um, this second action plan is, uh, of course, built upon the lessons learned from the first three years and also from our members and our experts' feedback. Um, it's organized around three key pillars um, with a very, very strong focus. And I have saw a question in the chat um, linked to this, a strong focus on aligning our activities with international initiatives, um, making sure that we complement each other and don't duplicate the work. And I think that's um, principle is at the heart of all of our projects uh, in general and specifically for, for the SDGs one um, overall. So we'll continue uh, for the next three years, our um, promotion and awareness raising capacity building of experts on the topic within the European community. Um, strong alignment with um, the global level also implies assessing the tools that ISO, IC and UNEC, for example, have put together on gender responsive standards tool that are dedicated to two technical experts who you might already be familiar with it if you are involved also at international level. We're going to assess the tools, um, see if it needs any adapt adaptation, and then uh, propose them for adoption at Senate and Senate level. Um, and then, of course, you'll get training on, on those new tools. Um, and the third pillar is about more of a holistic approach, making sure that all of our communications, um, policies, regulations have a systematic um, consideration of gender equality um, within our system. Um, the next step, um, we're, we're going to continue the group that we started uh, that has um, where all of our members from Senate and Senate like are invited to join. I think more specifically for US TB um, technical body officers, uh, one of the next steps that you can expect is that we're going to launch a survey um, in, in around April of next year uh, in the context of our project for within the strategy 2030 I keep on mentioning, uh, which will be looking at gender, but also other individual aspects of experts trying to, to map a sort of landscape of the diversity and, and representativeness of our um, technical committees and working groups. Um, as our first line of contact for technical committees, um, you will receive as secretaries and chairs the survey. So this is already my little putting on your radar that you'll receive this. And we really count on your support to disseminate this within your, your technical um, committees and your working groups. Another thing I wanted to quickly highlight is that in, in parallel to this gender action plan, uh, we do we also are um, involved in supporting um, European initiatives in different sectoral sectors of interest for Sen and Senelite. Um, cybersecurity, um, some of you I've seen in the registrations are, are active in that sector, so we are involved in the Women for Cyber Foundation. Um, for example, um, energy sector, we uh, recently signed the European Commission Equality Platform for the Energy Sector Declaration. Um, so again, all of those um, sectoral initiatives contribute to our sense and like action plan for gender equality, but also ensure that we increase the participation of women in our um, technical bodies um, in those priority uh, sectors. And that's something that's um, also repeated at national level by Sen and Sen like members, they were also involved in um, several national um, initiatives in specific sectors. So if you if you are working in a specific sector and you see that you're missing, um, for example, um, women expertise um, in your in your groups, um, you feel free to go back to your um, national body and ask if they have any pool of, of or network of such um, matter. If you've listened to me and retained nothing so far, <laughs> then focus now because that's my recap slide. Um, I think that uh, it's pretty clear that if we want to achieve the sentence and like goal uh, to continue enhance and further build a open, transparent and inclusive system, you have a super major role to play. We cannot do it without you and without your help. So that's why I'm going to insist a lot about this, because we need you um, uh, to make sure that those sustainability and inclusiveness aspects are flowing in the minds of your experts during uh, plenary meetings and working group meetings. For that, um, Claire has presented a bunch of different tools that are available at your disposal, um, mapping of SDGs, new work uh, item form guidelines, trainings, et cetera, et cetera. So use those and you also have contact points uh, for, for all of those projects. Claire for SDGs, 
um, myself specifically for gender. So if you have any questions, reach out to us, of course. As far as gender is concerned, we always um, advise you to keep your gender lens on at any time and just assume that any standards you're working, working on have um, gender implications. So highlight this to your experts, highlight the need to consider gender specificities when you're drafting something, highlight the need for data that you're using to build your standard on, that those data themselves are diverse and inclusive. Um, and that goes for gender, but for, for anything as well, of course. You also have this opportunity to nurture um, inclusive meetings, meetings where everyone feels the equal opportunity to participate. Um, of course, for that, you also have many tools at your disposal. You have the code of conduct, you have um, the guidelines for hybrid meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But you really have this opportunity to foster really enhanced participation of all experts in your TCs. I'm talking, I'm talking all of the stakeholders represented there. So know the rights and obligations of the different people around your table. And that's why you're here today. You're gonna to learn a bunch about that. But also make sure that individual experts have all, all they need to participate. Um, do they need the camera on because they have a hearing impairment? Do they need specific specific dietary preferences because they follow a specific regime? Do they need, um, do you always organize your, your meetings at the exact same time and it's always the same experts that cannot join? Can you, can you find a, a compromise that would benefit uh, everyone equally? Gender specifically, do you see that um, women are constantly interrupted? Unfortunately, that still happens. So make sure that everyone has the same uh, equal uh, time to speak. Um, in your in your TC, so just just all of those little things that you really have the power to make an impact and a change to ensure that everyone has the, the the same opportunity to participate. And of course, again, support the Sentence and Like initiative. If you find a survey in your mailbox, forward it um, to to your experts. Um, thank you. So what next? I think it's important to understand that uh, this project uh, was the foundation uh, for Sen and Senegal. So we have, with this project, build and raise awareness to the standardization community regarding the sustainable development goals. So this is a first phase, this is a good basis, uh, especially for the first phase two, sorry, for the clean transition green and digital. So there are no further discussion and uh, there will be certainly next uh, uh, future action uh, in, this, uh, in this area uh, and to support uh, this transition and uh, also in line with the EU standardization strategy. My takeaway, but I think uh, they will summarize it very well. So um, try to keep it simple and visual. So. Uh, SDG is for everyone, so it's relevant for all sectors uh, at the earth of our uh, strategy at Sen and Senelec, uh, but also EU policy. And uh, we can see also that ISO and IC, it's very high in the agenda, in the political agenda. Um, so just look at the toolbox that we uh, develop. Uh, make sure that uh, you fill uh, the new work item form to map uh, our standards. So it's very important because uh, it's visible on our website. So it's for all the community. And if you have any questions, so uh, you may have seen with the organigram, but uh, uh, we are organized by sector. So I invite you to contact your CCMC uh, sectoral project manager. Uh, from my side, I'm responsible for the consumer sector. Today, Benjamin is responsible for eco-design and energy, and we have uh, other colleagues uh, in charge of the different sectors. So more uh, um, also knowledgeable so, uh, in their area of activity. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, we can uh, take a few.